Good morning guys. So we are at the Madrid airport. I was here with study abroad and now I am headed to Krakow, Poland because I am going to do an Auschwitz tour and just visit Krakow and see what the town's all about. So I'm at the airport now waiting for my terminal or waiting for my gate terminal. I don't know. It's five o'clock in the morning. It's early. I got my fresh squeezed orange juice, some fruit. And we'll just see where this trip takes us. So I have the Auschwitz tour today. That leaves at 1. And it's currently 11.30. So I need to go find some snacks. Because they said it is like an hour bus right there. And an hour back. And you're there for I think 2 hours. So they want you to bring some snacks and drinks for the bus ride. Because there's nowhere to like get them over there. So I got a cinnamon roll, a water, a green tea, and I'm gonna go find a grocery store to get some like chips and stuff. Um, I had to come back and do an outfit change. Now I'm wearing this dress. Excuse the mess right here. Um, I love this dress I got from Target. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go to Auschwitz today. I'll film the whole thing. I'm really excited. I know it's weird to be excited, but this is one thing that's been on my bucket list forever, so excited that I get to check it off um, and just like learn more about everything because I am like the biggest Holocaust like I read all the books watch all the documentaries and movies so it's really cool to go see it's not cool I don't know how to explain it but it's really surreal to see where everything happened and this town seriously looks like it hasn't been changed I'm in Krakow and all the buildings look like they're from the movies like they haven't changed anything so it's kind of creepy walking through the town, but BTW, my apartment's on like the fourth floor, no elevator, so girl's getting a workout while she's here, so I can eat junk food. I mean guys, when I say that the buildings are very updated, and they look like you're in the movie, it's very surreal. So this is the main square, guys. You have a cathedral right there, the city tower, and the other popular building is right there in front of us. Decided to run the name of it. Hey guys, so I just got to Auschwitz. Um, we're waiting on our tour guide, but it is seriously surreal being here and seeing this. Um, so I'm just going to show you around my tour and see how it goes.
Hey guys, so I just finished dinner. I had to run and get food because I was dying after that tour. But I just wanted to show you how pretty Krakow is at night. So beautiful. So I am on the lift right now to get some dessert and then back to the apartment. Hey guys, so I just got back to the apartment. Um, went and had hard rock for dinner. I know I'm in Poland and I should be eating Polish food, but I've been in Europe for, today is day 11. Um, so I went with study abroad, but I've been craving American food, I'm telling you. So, Auschwitz, recap, it was an amazing experience. I got to check it off my bucket list. Um, but to tell you a little bit about it, so they do have food, <laughs> unlike what I was told. Um, so we arrived at Auschwitz 1, which I know watching like a bunch of movies, it could be very confusing of 1 and 2, but I mean, keep in mind they had thousands of camps throughout the whole entire war. So on the tour I took, I visited Auschwitz 1 and Auschwitz 2, which is also called Burnack or Burn something like that. But this is where you see the shoes and the hair and just like thousands of things that were collected from the Jews and from the prisoners of war that came into this camp. We got to see all their luggage, all the kids shoes. And it really put into perspective, even though it wasn't all there, of how many people were murdered during this time. So going on with the tour, we got to see a gas chamber. Um, it was very, very surreal going into it because, I mean, you read about it in history books, you learn about it in school, you watch it. And honestly, throughout the whole thing, I couldn't grasp. Like that's where it actually happened. So we walked through it and I mean, you see the graphic stuff like the fingernails on the wall, like the scratch marks. And then after you leave there, you go to the crematory and you see the furnaces and it's just like, you're in there for like five seconds, you just walk through, but like, I don't know, you just don't grasp the amount of people that were killed in there and just what happened. So it was very, very, weird and surreal so after this one we went to Auschwitz 2 which is where you see the famous building that like the train comes through and you get to see that which I thought it was so weird because it's a bookstore now and it's I don't know the whole thing is weird because like what I learned today is two years after everyone was liberated it became a museum like the whole concentration camps became a museum because people there didn't want others to think that it wasn't true and that their story never happened. So, and I even asked the tour guide, I was like, do people even come that soon? Like, when did it become popular that people actually started coming? And it wasn't until Schindler's List, he said that people started coming and each year the numbers just grow and grow. So at Auschwitz II, we didn't really, there's only two barracks that we could go into and it's because they're trying to preserve it. Um, there were memorials and like during the war the Germans did destroy a lot. They were trying to get rid of all the evidence and make it to where no one could see what they did. So a lot of the stuff there was destroyed but you could still see like the foundation of things and it was interesting to see the foundation of one of the gas chambers because we got to see like the underground tunnel to where people were changing and then to where they were put into the gas chambers. So all the pictures that you see it really put into perspective like what happened and these people waited hours to shower or bathe and it just it blows my mind to think that. So we did get to see a barrack that actually had like all the beds in it, or not even beds, but shelving, I want to call it, for the prisoners. Um, and it was very surreal to think that on this one pallet, like you see before, they would fit six to seven people there on pieces of wood. I highly recommend you do it because it does put your life into perspective to think that they were just normal people living day to day and one day 
they weren't. They were treated like they were animals and put into something like this. And it's just, I feel like we need to learn from history. So I have a 26 minute hike to get to the old town where it's called the Jewish Quarter. Um, and that is where the tour is gonna begin. So right now I'm just taking in all the sites of Krakow. I'm walking to my tour. Synagogue. This wall is made of gravestones that the Germans took down during World War II and they came and made a wall out of it. It's very interesting.